We are talking to Mike Cronin, staff writer for the Gloucester Daily Times. Hi, Mike. Hi, how's it going? Thank you. And we are talking about the story you wrote on the Atlantic Path controversy in Rockport. Could you start by telling us exactly what the Atlantic Path is? So the Atlantic Path is a, um, it's a public use path um, that starts from, um, goes right around the coast all the way up to Halibut Point State Park. And um, it kind of um, goes down uh, Phillips Avenue. Um, it was before, uh, it was there um, for years and years before um, any private owned land, um, any houses were there. Um, but over time, you know, the houses um, came around because uh, the path uh, kind of came before. Um, it kind of got grandfathered in. So the public path was still in place, even though it passes through private property along Phillips Ave. Um, over the years, you know, I guess um, from when I was speaking with um, John, the organizer of the protest, over the years, there's been, you know, um, some landowners around uh, Phillips Ave who would, you know, come and go, um, kind of put up a little bit of a fight <laughs> about um, their section of the uh, path. Um, some would not like, you know, people um, coming through um, and they would um, either, uh, you know, try to put up a fight in court or either put up obstacles um, to, you know, kind of redirect, I guess, the foot traffic. Um, from what I've heard with John, you know, these people are the minority. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, uh, a lot of the private property owners along the path have been, you know, caring for their sections as much as they can. You know, some have signs, I guess, um, welcoming people down the path as well. And I guess, uh, according to John, many show their support. But I guess over the years, there's been, you know, a couple who uh, don't see eye to eye with the uh, public who are using the path. Um, so according to the story, it sounds like the Atlantic Path was established to preserve access for particularly fishermen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all along the coast. So it, it was um, a way to use, um, uh, you know, right around the Halibut Point State Park area, they could use the path to walk down to the downtown area, um, you know, just as a quicker thing so they can, you know, uh, get their products out uh, and sell um, quicker. Um, You're talking about 100 years ago. That, yes, you know, oh yes, yeah. Okay. And is there any sort of um, sort of kind of like binding law that Rockport has established mm -hmm. saying this path will always be open to the public? Well, um, because it was grandfathered in, um, there's a stature in the um, state law that says that, um, you know, it's kind of like a use it or lose it law <laughs> where um, the um, in order for um, such a you know, grandfathered in um, piece of uh, public property to um, continue to be um, in public use, you would have to, you know, use it um, or have evidence of people using it um, over period um, periodically. So if, um, for example, you know, there's a, um, not a lot of people have been using the path for, um, however many months, um, landowners could challenge um, that in court saying, you know, as evidence, you know, I haven't seen anybody using the path for however long. And um, because of that, I don't feel that there is a need for the public to use this path on my property anymore. So um, what I actually didn't mention in the article um, was that, uh, uh, sorry, I have my notes <laughs> in front of me right now. Um, uh, there's been, um, you know, past organization, um, not past organizations, past people who've been, you know, making sure to use the path. Um, Ted Tarr, um, I know that he recently passed away, but he was a um, big proponent of the paths in um, Rockport. And um, he would organize something each year um, to uh, you know, keep the Atlantic Path you know clean, um, oh, uh, easy to walk through, and um, those um, organ uh, organized walks, uh, you know, counted for you know public use, um, and um, 
unfortunately, he recently passed away. I think it was last year or uh, late last year. And um, John, um, again, who organized the most recent um, walk, um, he would join Ted on these um, excursions. And so um, he was inspired by him and the walks that he went out with him um, to do something like this uh, last week. This is John Penaloza, right? Yes, yes. So I want to return to John, but just to um, cover this cl clearly, there mm -hmm. is a law that says, and I always get this wrong, that property owners own the land down to the low tide mark. Or yes. High. So, and the Atlantic Path covers, crosses that land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It contradicts the law that says someone who has waterfront property owns down to the low tide mark. Yes. But, right. uh, but again, um, because the uh, path was there before and um, uh, they, um, it still is um, that one, you know, that pathway area is still um, allowed for public use. It's not, I, I guess, um, you know, um, to the left or to the right of that is still, you know, is within private use, but just people walking and using that pathway is still um, allowed, um, despite, you know, some um, protests from past uh, uh, property owners. Right. So currently, there mm -hmm. is a property owner on Phillips Avenue who mm -hmm. does not want people to be crossing his property with the Atlantic Path. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Again, um, you know, this is, I guess, one of the, um, you know, um, uh, another one of the people who, you know, have disagreements. Um, I wasn't able to get in touch with the uh, property owner, um, but um, from what I can tell, um, when the protesters last week were walking down the path, uh, once they got to this certain property, there was um, sawhorses lined on the path as obstacles. And on the sawhorses, they were signs that um, read, you know, uh, try to redirect foot traffic down to the shoreline away from their property. And then they could go back up on the, um, on the path once they, you know, cross the threshold. But um, yes, uh, so uh, um, uh, from what I can, uh, from what I've learned, um, this has not been the first time uh, this certain uh, particular uh, property owner has tried to, you know, instate obstacles on their section of the path. Um, I was again, I wasn't able to confirm. Um, uh, exactly uh, what happened, but there has been, I guess, um, obstacles um, been put in place um, previously, according to what I um, spoke with with John. Um, and have there been lawsuits by, pro you know, property owners trying to, I don't know, sue to keep their land private? Has that happened? Yes. Uh, again, from what I heard with John, um, there was um, a situation previously with obstacles that um, the town had to get, um, step in and, um, you know, tell the property owner that, you know, these aren't allowed on this public um, pathway. So the um, town what was that? I'm sorry. The town prevailed in the past. Yes. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And yep. Corey, I know you have, you're burning up with questions, but I have a couple more. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I understand. So John Penaloza has sort of taken on the mantle of Ted Tar, and he's leading people down the Atlantic path to make sure that this right of way is preserved. Now, I understand from the first weekend he did this, there was a policeman who was yeah. present. Now, it's unclear what the policeman was there for, if this is a legal right of way. Is that right? Um, yes, uh, well, uh, when I spoke with him, hold on, it's in my notes again. Um, it said uh, the policeman, um, you know, at, um, spoke with the protesters. John was up in front, I guess. Um, he was the first one to um, give his name to the police officer. Um, the police officer was there to take the names and the date of births of um, the people who were walking. Uh, the officer said that um, you could be potentially charged with civil and criminal trespass. Um, and um, about there was about 75 walkers, I guess, uh, according to John, at least 60 um, people uh, gave their names to the police, um, and they continued through, um, regardless of, you know, um, the warnings that the uh, police officer said. Um, 
I spoke with John quickly um, last night, um, and he said that you know police officers have um, you know yet to reach out to him. Um, they, they haven't. Uh, he hasn't heard any news of any charges being brought against him or anything like that. Um, uh, from what I can tell from, um, you know, talking around, uh, you know, getting information for the story, it doesn't seem that, um, the police right now are interested in pursuing charges. But again, this could change. Um, when I was writing the story, uh, you know, there was, um, reason to believe that, um, there, um, wouldn't be any, um, follow-up action, um, but again, I can't really <laughs> make any guarantees with um, how that might play out in the future. So if the Rockport police were there because the homeowner wanted them there or because the town wanted them there, what it still seems unclear because this is supposed to be a legal action to walk on that path at this point. Right? Yes, again, I wasn't able to speak with the property owner. So, um, and um, when I asked for comment for the Rockport police, um, uh, they didn't get back to me on it. Um, so, uh, again, I don't, um, know if it was when I spoke with, um, Paul Murphy, mm -hmm. he didn't make mention that, you know, they called the police down to, um, the town called the police down to, um, you know, uh, monitor the situation. So again, I'm not, I'm not sure, um, who I guess made the call again? I I couldn't reach out to the property owner, and um, the Rockport police um, didn't get um, um, I didn't get a comment from them in time. But um, yeah, it seems that um, they were there to remind people that uh, you know criminal or not criminal um, charges could be brought against them um, um, if you know. It seems, it seems strange, doesn't it? Am I right? It does. Well, um, I guess <laughs> if the if the um, if the path is indeed a public path, right. um, then it uh, should you know it should. I, I don't want to editorialize too much, but you know it should um, no. be free to walk. Um, right, and the through. path should not be necessary. So. Um, mm -hmm. It's, and how, who is pressing these charges of trespassing and how they have a right to do so. Corey, what do you have to add? Well, I'm just wondering, does this all boil down to a question of liability? I mean, if someone breaks an ankle on the path, who's liable? Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, is it the property owner? Is it, uh, you know, enter at your own risk? Is there any signage mm -hmm. like that along the path? Because some of those spots down there can get pretty dicey. Very, yeah, yeah it's hard walking, right. Again, um, you know, uh, when I was speaking with John, he did mention that, you know, um, a lot of the property owners um, along that pathway, they do, you know, put in their time to kind of clear up the paths just so it's easier to, um, for people to walk. I'm not exactly sure um, if, uh, again, and I wouldn't imagine if the path is public that the um, private property owner uh, where I guess a person would, you know, get injured would be responsible for that. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of, um, this is kind of just my assumption. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, anyone from the town, like the chair of the rights of way committee? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, what about the rights of way committee? I couldn't, um, talk to the rights of way committee. Yes. I, uh, I did try to reach out to them, um, as well. I think, um, uh, I, I did try to reach out to Monica again. I couldn't really um, get her on uh, the uh, on the on the horn uh, in time. But when I was speaking with Paul, they said that um, they are working with the Rights Away Committee, uh, Town Council, and the Board of Selectmen to reach out to the property owner, and they hope that um, they can reach some sort of uh, agreement with the property owner about um, you know this ongoing issue. Uh, Paul did not want to, uh, you know, go too deep into <laughs> what the, um, conversations were like. He said that there were, um, there were, you know, lawyers involved with these conversations. So there's, um, again, uh, I couldn't really confirm if that means there's possible, um, 
litigation being brought forth or um, whatever, or if this is just, you know, just, just talks, um, you know, with legal counsel. Um, yeah. back in uh, but um, he didn't want to, um, you know, discuss it further. But um, yes, those three um, town groups are uh, meeting with our ongoing talks with the property owner um, to hopefully um, get some kind of resolution out of this. And is John Penaloza talking to the town at all? Do you know? Not that I know of. Um, I'm sure that, you know, um, you know, the town would be interested in speaking with him, um, you know, just to um, get the other side of the story. If indeed, you know, uh, there are, um, again, I, 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 I shouldn't say, uh, I don't know if um, the town has reached out to John um, personally. But I, will, um, I, you've mentioned this already, but I will repeat it was that in your story, you mentioned that some of the property owners nearby came down to support the people. Yes, yes. Again, John, you know, wanted to make it clear that, you know, these, um, these people um, who have been against the past, the path in the past, <laughs> um, they have been in the minority. Um, a lot of people on that uh, who live on the street, uh, Phillips Avenue, they do, um, you know, enjoy, um, access, public access, um, along the shoreline. And, um, yes, they, uh, John said that, uh, when they were walking, they saw, uh, people who lived there go out on their front porch, I mean, front porch, back porch, I should mm -hmm. say. And, um, there was cheering, they were waving, uh, cheering the, uh, marchers on. So, yeah, again, um, for them, from what I can tell, the majority of people that live, um, that have their property, um, have the path cut through their property. They um, see no real big issues with, <laughs> with having a public path um, kind of going down their backyard. Right. And just, just to finalize this, could you describe this Phillips Avenue neighborhood for us? Um, uh, I went down to the, uh, the house in question um, just to see if I could get a comment. Um, the people that um, were there uh, claimed to not be the owners of the property, but um, the uh, I guess um, the it, the houses are uh, quite secluded. Um, there's a lot of woods, um, a lot of long driveways getting back to the houses. Um, the house that I saw, um, it was a uh, it's quite expansive, I guess you could say. Um, it's a very nice property. Um, and, um, but again, I'm not sure, um, there's people who were at the house. I'm not sure if they were renting it out or whatever. Um, they did, they declined to comment. Um, so, you know, I mean, uh, my visit very brief, but, um, I'm not sure if it was, um, a rented out property or what, or if they're, um, or in the family staying over. But yes, um, it's right on the, um, these properties all on Phillips Ave, they are right on the waterfront um, and um, very secluded. Um, so um, you can tell that maybe some would, um, you know, prioritize privacy um, if they plan on living there. Um, but, you know, that's me again, you know, giving <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, there has been a tradition, and maybe just led by Ted Tarr in Rock, mm -hmm. of trying to preserve these rights of way. And, yes. And people take great pride in seeing Rockport as a town that has these, you know, welcoming natural paths. So, um, mm -hmm. so it's an interesting controversy. Yes. Particular. Yeah. So thanks for writing this story. Corey, do you have anything, a last comment? No, I mean, get, that was a, a, a big lesson we just got. We want the 101 or the 401 from my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great job. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks for writing the story, and I hope if, if you cover some follow up so we can learn more. Yes, great. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Mike. Take sure. care. Yeah.